Hi everyone, David Mayala here, and today we're going to do some really cool stuff. We're going to do affinity analysis. This is a two-part video series. There's two pieces to it. The first one we're going to do today, right now, is going to draw. We're going to draw in the data. We're going to pull the data, and then we're going to do some cool insights and draw some cool insights from it. And then the second part, which is the next video, we're going to actually pull the affinity analysis stuff using the a priori algorithm. So they both go in conjunction with one another. With one another, you can't do one without the other. And uh, you need to watch this video and then the next video. This is some really cool stuff that I use every day in uh, data science. So let me pull this in here so I can highlight the pen here. And uh, so you can see what I'm looking at better. So first, let's start off. We're going to load libraries. That's these guys right here. We've got seven of them. Reader, Deployer, De TidyR, A Rules, A Rules Viz, Methods, and OpenXLSX. If you don't have them installed, just use this right here, install.packages, and then the name of the library you don't have. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to load in the data. So it's right here. This guy right here. We're going to put it into a data frame called test1. We're using read.xlsx. The reason being is this is actually an xlsx or an excel file. Um, if it was a CSV, I would use the line right above it, which is just read.csv, and then its location and strings is factors equals truth. That's all, the one right above it. So let's put this this way a little bit so we can open this up so you can see it all right there. That's the lines of code right there. Next, what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is get the shopping basket. So we take this line of code right here. So we're taking test one and we're using pipes and we're grouping it by the transaction number and then we're summarizing the basket by UPC number of a list, right? So each transaction can have multiple UPCs. This is one of the tougher parts of understanding for some people with affinity analysis is that a transaction, when somebody shops at a grocery store or a chain store or even a drug store, they don't usually go in there and buy one item. They might go in a drug store and get three, pick up three prescriptions. They might go pick up two prescriptions, a book and a, and a container of milk if they want the target. They go, you know, it depends on the store. But regardless, what I'm trying to get at is you need to pull back for an affinity analysis all of the items in each basket. So that means each transaction that occurred. So that's what this line of code does right here. From here, let me just highlight this up to here. That's what you need right there. So we're summarizing the basket based on transaction number and each UPC number as a list of that transaction number. Then what we do is we write the, we use this piece right here. And what that does, that shows me each line and the baskets associated with each line. You don't have to memorize this or really understand it all. It just shows me the UPC numbers. Okay, so we're doing it by UPC. If I was using UPC descriptions, you may not want to use that because that could be uh, very intensive on your uh, system, on your laptop. And that would be things like bananas, milk, yogurt, eggs, uh, prescription of whatever the name of the prescription is, so on. Okay, it's easier to just use UPCs for this part. Later on, you can you bring back in the UPC descriptions. So next, we do, we've do. we already done, we've determined the shopping baskets. That's what that does. It's, we've got that right here. And that's in our uh, data frame called baskets. See it right there? So next, what we're going to do is we're going to compute the transactions. So we're going to make them into transactions. So what we're doing here is this. As baskets, dollar sign basket, right? So each basket, we're going to make it transactions. And we're looking at that, and then we're going to do a histogram on that. So let's take that right here. This is the histogram, hist size transactions. Breaks The breaks of 0 to 50 here is because if you see to the right, this is we're going to end up with something like this. But I know the data all falls in under 50 items per basket for this group of customers. It depends on your data. If your data, you have people that go into uh, a shop and they end up buying 100 items, well, then you might need to increase that. So this is variable, this 50 right here, okay, that works for this situation. So let's do this. Now, this is a basic histogram, right? So if we look at that, it doesn't tell you a whole lot. The other one was better, but it does give you a breakdown of how these people are buying. Their frequencies, right? That's what we're seeing right now. The frequency and the size of their transactions. You can see how many bought is zero, how many bought with a basket size of 10 items, 20 items, 30 items, 40 items, and even on up to close to 50. Okay? Those are your shoppers that buy a lot, apparently, up there. Now, next I'm doing the same graph that you saw earlier with a little bit more to it. So let's open this up so you can see the code here. And obviously, the one I just did was just this histogram size transactions and breaks, right? Now we're doing the same thing, but what we're going to do is breaks, same, 0 to 50, 
but we're also going to use uh, a different Y limit. We're going to use some uh, labels like number of items per basket, number of items, total baskets, items. So when we take this whole line right here, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and this par infra. If you guys have watched my videos, you know what that is. That sets it back to be just one graph. So in case you're doing multiple graphs, you're doing other projects at the same time, you know, it would make this graph very small over here. Instead, it's going to make this one graph just like it is right now. This just resets it if you need to. So then we hit Control and Enter, run it, and you see now it gives you a little bit more info. It's a little bit better looking graph. It tells you the total baskets, the total items associated with all of those baskets, and then you've got the frequency and number of items. The rest looks kind of the same, and I've set it so that it looks as good as you can pretty much. Or you can make it a little bit prettier if you wanted to, but that's pretty good. It gives you an initial breakdown of your items and your baskets, right? So next, distribution of shoppers' baskets. We want to know what is their minim minimum, maximum, median, all that kind of stuff. So what we do is we take size of transactions of baskets right here. See that? And you put in basket sizes, and then we do a summary based off that. So let's do that and watch what you get. You just get this right down here, which is gives you your mean, right, of the basket size, right? So the mean, and that fits right in line, is about a 9.5, basically. Right there's our mean, our max is 47, right there, and our minimum is 1, right there. So it all looks in line, that's what we got right there. Then if we want to go and break it down further, there's a quantile breakdown, so you run quantile as a function of basket sizes, and your probability sequence is 0, 1, and 0 0.1. So let's do that, and here you go. And so what you've got here is a breakdown, which shows the same thing above of the basket sizes. You do have some people up here with a higher basket, but it's smaller groups. I don't need about Reddit right now. And then... Let's go a little further. Let's get the, these are more important things than the, the quantiles here. So we really want to know what is the average basket amount right now. So that's what this one's going to tell you. The mean basket amount is the aggregate of total sales. See this? The aggregate function, total sales based on transaction number. And the data obviously is test one, which we created above. Okay. And the sum. We're going to do the sum of it, right? So the sum gives you a basket amount. And then we'll do the same thing, but instead with the mean. The mean will give us the individual price of the average price per item. All right, so first let's do this one, all right? Run that, and then you run a summary on it. What that'll do is that gives us this, which tells us our what, our sum, and we want our mean. Our mean is 25.24. So right there we know 25.24, $25 basically is the average basket amount, the, the amount they spend, a customer spends on that basket. Now if we do the aggregate, of total sales, transaction number, same thing, data test one, but instead of sum, we put mean here. That's the only difference, and we change the name here to put into uh, mean basket price, right? So we've got mean basket amount, and we got mean basket price. We run this, that tells me the actual average right here is $2.47 per item. That's how much the, these customers spend per item. Well, they're, you know, they're obviously going to have some that are like $10 or $5 or whatever. They're going to have some things that are like $0.50 cents or $0.30 cents or a dollar or whatever in there. So that's how that breaks down. Their average is $2.74 per uh, item. Now, to find out which products the customers are buying, we have to calculate the relative frequency, right? So that's what this will tell you right here of each product in the transaction data. So if we open this up a little bit more so you can see the whole thing, what I wrote here, in the transaction data. That's what that says over there. So right here, we've got this piece of code right here. We have to run item frequency on the transaction we created above, and then we're going to round the item frequencies and the sum of the item frequencies. So the item frequencies divided by the sum of the item frequencies times the sum of the basket sizes gives us the product count. So we've got these two things. So you got this one first. This one's a little easier. Item frequency of the transactions, right? So if you run that, we get 9.47, 9.48 basically. And then the next one is the item frequencies divided by the sum of the item frequencies times the sum of the basket sizes. So if we do that, that gives us the product count. So let's do that. And that gives you this. So the product count, it gives you the mean based on the product count. And that's all you need to know right there. But now this is where it gets really interesting. So next, if we do a sort, right, the sort function right here, we do the sort on product count, which we just created above, right? Decreasing equals T. Ordered, and we put that into order products. Watch what happens here. We're going to do order products. Now, or this orders 
all of the products. We want to look at what are the top 10 products. So this will order it. We can do this and then order it 1 to 50, 1 to 20, top 20 products. I just want to look at the top 10, right? So let's do this. So there we go. We've got them going across, right? The top number is the product UPC number, right? And underneath it is the number of their occurrence or the count. It says right here, top is item number, bottom is the count. So we've got is 10 items across. The first one's 4033 and so on and so forth. And their account. And that's really cool. A lot of marketing departments, category departments want to know this. What is their most purchased items? And they usually will have an idea of what it is. This just gives you another way of measuring it really fast. Now, in the affinity analysis below, what's interesting is you will see that, some, that many times the most bought product is not necessarily a part of an affinity purchase. So that doesn't always, you can't just base, oh, they buy milk. Everybody buys milk. That doesn't mean they buy milk with cookies all the time or milk and cheese and crackers. It depends. Okay. Now, the most popular product in this case is what? 4033. I don't know why it says 411. Let's do this. Okay. And it appeared in the carts. Let's see how many times it appeared in the carts. Well, let's do this. If we run this, so we already have the ordered products 1 through 10, right? Now, it's going to be 61%. So that's 61.13. And I'll show you how that works. So basically what we got right here is we're going to order the products of the first one. Remember, we did 1 through 10 to the first one, the top product, by the dimension of the transactions for that one, right? So if we do that and then we do this par and fro, watch what happens. We've got this. So I don't have to do the par and fro. This is to reset if the graph thing over here is different, but that's fine. You're just basically doing this guy right here. Okay, and what we did there was determine the top product was 4033, which is what we measured before, right? Bring this thing up a little bit. Right there, 4033. Right here's 4033. And then the percentage is this times 100, right? So 0.6112918 means 61.13%. That's where that comes from. That tells you right there, you now know your top 10 products in these customers' baskets, this specific subset of customers, their uh, most popular product. And uh, so we got some interesting information. We know how their product, we know how their baskets, their average basket size, the or amount, uh, the size, and the cost per item, the average cost per item, uh, the most popular products. We know a lot of great insight here and a lot of great information. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do the infinity plot, and that's what we're going to determine. Does the most popular product necessarily always mean that that's an affinity purchase? No. And you can really see some really cool stuff. So we're going to do that in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe. Take a moment to subscribe down below. Uh, like and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and have a great day.